All right, you guys. Hello, welcome to YouTube land. We're gonna get right into it with our love and hip hop Atlanta. Season seven, I think we on episode 10. I was saying eight the last time, but that was nine and this is 10. All right, guys, we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna start, I took notes, but I'm a freestyle as much as I can. It basically started with young Jock. He's at uh, Rashida and Kirk house. He claimed he's been crashing over there for the last couple of days. And he want Rashida to go over there and talk to KD to help him get back in with psycho old crazy ass uh, Khadijah. Now, um, Khadijah crazy as a motherfucker. I didn't know Khadijah was this crazy. But um, KD meets with Rashida and supposedly shows her a couple of places to try to open up the store. And um, while they're uh, there and they're showing her uh, office space or whatever, um, Rashida is telling KD, supposedly this nigga been crashing on her couch for the last two days and she basically saying she can't take it no more. He gotta go. He eating up all the waffles, all the orange juice, and he's getting on everybody nerves. I just want to know, I just got one question, young Jock. Why you ain't got nowhere to stay? I know you got a bunch of baby mamas and you might need this storyline, but damn, young John, you ain't even got, you ain't even got your own place. Damn, baby. So anyway, um, Khadijah agrees to meet up with young Jock and her and young Jock meet up in this restaurant. This motherfucker shows up with some handcuffs, handcuffs. He's saying something about you can handcuff me, whatever. And, uh, so you know, I'm going to try to work this out. Sideline, KD, I need you back in my life. you the best thing that has ever happened to me, monetary style. And none of my baby mamas got their shit together. And you is the best thing going, uh, mama. So that's why I am pursuing you, KD. KD basically saying that she ain't ready. She knows she being used. And uh, she don't want to be bothered by young Jock at this moment. I don't know. I don't know what's popping with that. Moving right along, we got Kalina in this tired ass storyline. Kalina meets up with Miss Deb, and she's basically telling Miss uh, she's telling Deb Anthony that this nigga, her husband Tony, don't have time for her and her music. So uh, Deb telling her, okay, you cut ties, get him to sign off, and I'll manage you. She goes to Tony, and uh, he basically tell that bitch, say la vie. Peace. He, she gets mad, mad because he don't want to sign the paper. He signed the paper. She gets even mad, and she want to fight. Oh, my God, Kalina. And Kalina done picked up a lot of weight. Kalina got, but don't, don't. Kalina got booted for days. But don't or don't. So then, moving right along, we got Carly Red. Messy ass Carly Red. What the fuck? Is Mona Scott paying you to start shit everywhere you go? Carly Red meets up with Dime Peace. Dime Peace, Jessica Rabbit, whatever y'all want to call this bitch. She tells Carly Red the reason why Miss Jocelyn so pressed. These folks is going in on Twitter. It's so good. It's so good. I had to just do my hands like this. Well, see, what happened is Miss um, Jocelyn and Don Peace been fucking. And uh, Miss, Miss Don Peace say um, Stevie was sitting there watching old girl drink from the fountain. I guess uh, suck that twat. Eat that pussy. Play with that monkey. And uh, he said and watch. These some freaky motherfuckers. And I think that's the same shit Mimi and Jocelyn used to do. So it's, it's a lot of shit. Free, uh, Stevie a freaky motherfucker. And so um, what happened is they say, Miss Jessica say, 
After Jocelyn got up to go to the bathroom, Stevie asked her, can you put a baby in her? So these freaky motherfuckers got a whole bunch of shit going in in the closet. So Carly Red then meets with um, Jocelyn to tell her about the meeting with her and, and uh, Dime Peace. And uh, Carly Red is just a little messy when she just go from here to here to here to here. Anybody who bring a bone, carry a bone. I'm sorry. That's how I've always been taught. Carly Red, go set your mess at ass. Damn, Mama Scott, you really paying her six figures to start shit? I'll take it for two shit. I'll I, I be messy. I'll be whatever you want me to be for double figures. So anyway, uh, Carly Red beats up with uh, Jocelyn, and she tells her everything that Miss Diane P says. She said, bitch, you press, you mad, because you, you her trick. And you was eat my pussy. And uh, Stevie wanted to put that dick in me. The sausage. We're going to say sausage. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, you know, it might be some young folks that, that chime in. I'm going to have to calm it down some. And anyway, um, Jocelyn said, oh, so this is what this bitch going around saying. Color is like, yeah, yeah, that's what she's saying. That's what she's saying. Messy ass, Carly Red. Carly Red, you deserve every dollar you got because somebody going to beat your ass. And I heard Jocelyn beat your ass. But I see you on the after party saying she didn't beat your ass. Wink, wink, you go, you know, you say these blogs is lying. Something happened. Because if nothing happened, you would have said ain't none of that shit true. And you would have let it be. But that ain't what you said. That ain't what you said, girl. That ain't what you said. So anyway, this Margot Arian and this uh, Mimi shit. This shit is done got boring. Arian supposedly done bought a condo. Mimi comes over. Arian invited Margo. Didn't tell Mimi. They all sitting here doing this kumbaya motherfucking y'all. And they get into it again. Mimi and Margo. Come on. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And uh, Arian kind of nicely asked me, uh, Margo to leave. Margo, you really childish. I'm like everybody else. Your music sound good. But if I was to judge you from just your character, I wouldn't fuck with your music. But I heard you sing. You actually sound really, really, really good. And uh, basically, let me see. Is that all that basically took place tonight? On Love and Hip Hop, this the life. This is the life. This the life. Baby. Yeah, the only exciting part was... Uh, Dying Peace telling about how um, Jocelyn can eat that pussy. So, um, I talked about Jack and Katie meeting back up. I talked about Carly. talked about Jocelyn. And basically, uh, at the end, when it gets ready to go off, Dime Peace shows up at the studio to meet up with Jocelyn. And uh, Jocelyn say, yeah, bitch, I hear the Dime Penny. She says, that Dime Penny. Tell Don Penny, let's, 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 you know, let's get it popping. What's up? And of course it goes off. So we got to go into another week watching them meet up. But uh, guys, it was kind of a filler episode. There was only a great 20 minutes out of the entire hour. Exclude the commercials. I have many minutes that we get to see it. And uh, next week, it looks like it's going to be a little bit better. Um, this Khadija and this KD and Young Jock shit, KD. KD, you need some Prozac, baby. You got about four, five personalities. You got about four, five, six personalities. Mimi, you always on 10. I see next week, Erica going to be on there starting some shit. Rashida and, and, and I see um, Kirk. They finna start this cheating role now. Now, Kurt's supposed to be fucking this little girl. <sighs> Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. That's all I got for you guys. I'm tired. You guys have a nice night. Thank you guys for following. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button down there. You know that one down there? That, that button. You know that button that say... Subscribe, guys. If you like what you see, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. 
follow me on Twitter and on Facebook. And I really, really thank everybody for supporting me. You guys have a blessed day. Thank you. And see you when I see you. Good night.